So here we are. We've talked about the various things that, that has happened. It's been a lot. It's been a lot. So please hang in with us on this. So we talked about the trial and um, what happened with the trial and what led up to the custody trial. So now we got to talk about the Facebook posts. Facebook posts. Um, my husband, who was, I, like he, he had to get out some of these things that was happening because, again, he was at the trial. We heard a lot of things that was said, um, the grandstanding and the simp that was sitting there. So my husband was done. He was full. So um, there was a circumstance that led up to him being inspired to write that post. We'll talk about that later. Okay. All right, we'll talk about that later. So now we're going to talk about, he put the post up. Mr. Irritated Genie decided that he's going to use his blog talk radio to take advantage of his jabs at not only me and my husband, but to the sister. So, so much so that he uploads the, the, the blog talk radio show to YouTube and explodes. We have people making all kind of comments and threats on uh, as a response to his grand standing famous the state versus the irritated genie he went after um, my husband and myself using my well mainly my husband's government name and um, saying some very vicious and disturbing things and so now there was something else that had tr transpired just before the actual custody trial that we're going to speak on right now but then we're going to take that and we're going to circle back to the state versus the irritated genie blog talk radio program and tie it all together so now we're going to talk about the protective order so the question may be why did you file protective order and there's a lot of reasons um the first being Remember, recall we were talking about the child support trial and we had three and a half days of trial. Just before um, the last day of trial, I had allowed the children um, to go spend the weekend with Ayam. Now, mind you, at this point, I told you I wasn't, we hadn't agreed really, we didn't have really a meeting place or a drop off place, but his mother had been kind of like the go to. So I would drop the children off with his mother and she would take them to see him and then it would t with, when it would be time for them to come home, she would bring them to me. So this particular weekend, it's a Sunday, I'm food shopping and I was supposed to, his, I, his mother called me and said, um, oh, I have the children, I'm ready to bring them back, are you home? And I said, no, actually she called me earlier, you know, will you be home? I said, yes. So when she called me, told me she was about to leave, I was actually still at the grocery store. And I said, oh, you know what? I'm still at the grocery store. Can you just meet me here? And she said, sure. So I'll, said, I'll call you when I get there. So she gets to the grocery store, meets me outside. I'm loading my car. Um, and we talk for a while. She leaves. No, she, no, I leave. She goes in the grocery store to pick up a few things. I leave. As soon as I pull out of the grocery store, there's like a red light. I make a right turn onto another street. And as I make that turn, it's like a lot, a lot of cars, a few car lengths behind me, maybe about four car lengths behind me, I see a blue Jag turning in the same direction that I'm turning. And I said, hmm, that looks like Ayo's car. So I'm like, hmm, uh, nah. 
But then, so as a, as we're moving, you know, the cars are moving now, and now his car is turning fully into the lane. He's thinking he's completing his turn. Now I can see his torso, his upper body, and I'm like, it is him. Oh my god. Okay, so now I'm panicking. I'm like, okay, well maybe let me let me calm down because maybe it's a, just a coincidence. He does live in this area. It's possible he just happens to be in the same area handling his own business. Okay, so now I'm coming up to the exit I should be taking soon to get onto the highway um, to go home. So I'm like, what do I do? What do, I do? I said, oh, you know what? I know what I'll do. Instead of me going that way, because he, I know that's the same way he has to go home. So, I, I, and remember I told you guys, he doesn't know where I live. Okay. So I don't want him to see, recognize, think, you know, if he's following me, then I'll find out because what I'm about to do is I'm going to go a different route. I'm a detour. So I, instead of turning onto the highway, I go straight. He goes straight, okay? Still could be a coincidence. Maybe he's not following. So I get on the phone with my best friend. I'm telling her, um, I, he's behind me. I'm talking to code because my children are in the car now and he's behind me. Um, she's, what, what is going on? I'm like, I, I don't know. Uh, what should I do? I don't know, uh, we're trying to figure it out as we're driving. And I said, okay, I know one thing I'm gonna do. I'm in the fast lane. I'm gonna slow all the way down so that all the cars between mine and his will have to get out of the lane. So we had like three cars between us. Three, two of the cars got out of the lane. And then I noticed he got out of the lane. So I was like, okay, maybe he's not following me because he's getting out of the lane. Then all of a sudden, he jerks back into my lane because he realized I didn't get out of the lane. He thought I had. So he got back. I said, no, he's still behind me. Now there's one car between us. So now I'm driving purposely slow. The other car turns off. Now it's just him and I. And instead of him, just a regular street, he slows way down to way well below the speed limit. So now I know you're following because now you purposely are trying to create distance between us. If you were just driving, you would just keep going. You would go past me, go past, go around me or whatever. He slows way down. And so, oh, oh my God, I don't know what it is. So now what I did was I pulled up. Uh, after the light, I noticed, it just so happened, there were about... Five police cars parked off on the side of the road, a bunch of police officers out, outside talking to each other. I pulled my car over and I said, officer, that is my ex-husband and he's following me, I don't know why, but we are in the middle of a child custody battle and I'm scared. And they said, what, where is he? And he kept going straight, as slow as he could, he kept going straight. And they said, you know what, where do you live? I said, well, I live back over here and so and so. They said, okay, well you go back that way He's going straight, and now the way he was going turned into a one-way street, so he couldn't turn around. He was going onto another highway. He can't turn around. He can't come back. So you go, and he said, now, if you have any problems, you call us. All right. Now I'm terrified because I'm like, I know in my gut he's following me. So now I tell my lawyer, and she said, you know what? Um, we got to file a protection order. You guys, you guys are thinking about this. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm scared. Um, but then in the meantime... Now we go to court, um, and uh, the judge gave her verdict that I had sole custody. All right, so that's done. Now all of a sudden, uh, about it wasn't even a, maybe a week later. It was not that long. Maybe a maybe just a few days or a week later was when he did his Monday night show, The State versus the Irritated Genie, and proceeded to play audio of the court trans trans. Um, transcript and so now we're looking at the YouTube comments and, and everybody's telling me the YouTube unless you gotta watch he's talking about he's playing the court video the court audio what my name is out there and all we're seeing in the comments of Black women need to be killed. That's exactly what the first comment said. And all y'all little cronies were following behind. Oh, this is a nad and this. Oh my God, it's horrible. And this is hard. This is wrong. And all kind of threats started coming in. My family was watching that. And my family was taking notes. Do you see all these threats on your life? What is this? 
So now I'm like, I need to get a protective order because I'm not playing around. I'm not playing this game. See, I know what it is. I've been with him for 10 years. You just met him yesterday. You just stumbled upon his YouTube yesterday, video yesterday. You just joined his organization yesterday. I've known him for 10 years. He was purposely antagonizing you so that you would do something on his behalf to harm me. So now we got a protective order. So now he gets served with a protective order and now we have to go to trial, all right? Now we're in trial and we are seen before, a, a, no, I'm sorry, we first went to court and he didn't show up. And so I was like, I don't know where he is. My, my lawyer was running to look behind that, that she had another court case and she was running, she was in another courtroom in the courthouse. This little Asian woman, it's just me, it's me and the judge and the bailiff uh, you know, court people, in the, and I think maybe that was it. I don't think there was any other any anybody else in the courtroom, like no other plaintiffs and defendants. And he's like, you know, where's the the uh, defendant? All of a sudden, this little Asian woman gets up. Oh, judge, I'm here um, on behalf of. It sounded like she said she was there on behalf of the sheriff's office. So I'm thinking, oh, maybe the sheriff's office couldn't serve him. And we tried. He was trying to get served, but he's out of the country, um, and so we need to try to reschedule. Okay. Um, and then she clarified it. No, she's actually with an attorney's office that rep that's representing him. She's there on behalf of the attorneys representing him. He's out of the country, um, but uh, he he wants to. So he wants to, uh, an extenuation of the court case, the court date. No problem. The judge extended the court date. Now we're back in the court. Uh, like I think it was like two weeks later or something like that. Now he's back in the country. I'm in there with my lawyer. <laughs> And I'm looking around like, where's this lawyer? No, where's this lawyer that he has, you know? Everybody's, you know, everybody's there. And I see Conrad the Simp is also there. He's back again on the scene. Back on the scene. Ready again to lie. Ready and waiting. He's there in his African guard. Oh, that was the thing. He's in his African guard, Conrad the Simp. In the child support case, um, I think Io wore some African guard, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Or did he wear... No, okay. I mean, maybe he, he didn't. Did. He didn't wear a suit or anything. He had on like regular clothes. Okay. Yeah, like a. Some he had denim. a dashiki. No, he didn't have a dashiki on. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't. I don't remember they what he had on. But let's. But I know when the, for the protective order. I, I, I distinctly remember because <laughs> we were all floored. Like he came in with a suit. Who came in with a suit? Io. Oh, a full suit, tie and everything. And Conrad the Simp had on African attire. But that wasn't the astonishing part. The astonishing part was who was representing Idol? A cave Becky. Blonde haired, blue eyed, the whole shenanigans. Cave Becky he had as his lawyer. A cave Becky. When he was calling us race traders, all over him, we we're race traders. We like, you know, the people who went after Lumumba. Three, the Mobutu factor. Dealing with the Mr. Mobutu and Auntie Crooked. You know those crooked aunts. These old wicked folks. You've traitors to our race. I'm going to say this. People need to hear this. I want you to understand, I'm not ever putting myself on the same level as Patrice Lumumba or Fred Hampton Sr. Or, uh, uh, what's my brother? Uh, 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 Thomas Sankara. I will say this though. I want you to understand how ridiculous you sound defending Mobutu and the slaughter of Lumumba. Or talking about, man, I knew O'Neal when he was little, man. I knew Hampton, too. I like both of them. How you going to like both of them? Man, poison our brother. So that when the pigs came, they would have a, a brother that's ha halfway out of it already so they could just murder him dead in his sleep. With his baby, and his newborn babies, right? Well, not even born yet. His pregnant wife right there with his child in her stomach. And you going to tell me how you feel about William O'Neal? What? How you want? You can't love both. You can't have nothing good to say about one or you on that team. 
If you got anything good to say about Mobutu, you with Mobutu. Like it don't work that way at this level of war. When you don't know before this year, before last week, you didn't know what was going on. So then when you say, man, I hope she's okay too, and I love both of y'all, I just smile it off. Now that you know, dang, Mobutu set this up to kill Lumumba? Or, or, or William O'Neill snitched rat to the pigs? You still talk to me about, uh, uh, I hope it works out? What? You hope it works out? So what, you want me to die? You hope it works out? Nah, it don't work like that. You got to pick, and when you don't pick, you on the other team by, by default. I'm just being real with it. You can't say nothing positive to me if you know. Now, the people, again, you didn't see it. I'm not talking to you. But you seen it. You heard it. You know. And then you want to glamorize. Oh, she said these positive things. How the hell she said this positive with the pigs? Talking about a black man is trying to save his race. You got something positive to say? Then you just like her. You ain't no different. You're not my friend. There's no love. No love. Nothing there. I'm hollow inside. I don't know you. Obviously, I never did. Ain't no coming back from that. Don't come to me with no, I hope y'all work it out. You're not my friend. You want William O'Neill to, uh, 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 you want Fred Hampton to work it out with O'Neill. You want Sankara to work it out with, uh, 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 what was that fool's name? Uh, Campare. With Blaze. You want, 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 you want Sankara to work it out with Blaze. Are you serious? You're not no African. That means that you got that crooked in you too. You crooked too. You got to be crooked. Ain't no way you can see that and hear that and then be my friend. And then you don't got nothing to say about the crooks, the crooked folks involved. The, the thieves and the criminals trying to steal the future of African people. We are not friends. What I want y'all to do. I hope y'all hearing me. I don't have friends that love my enemies. I just have enemies. That's all I have. Friends and enemies. Ain't no love for both sides. Then you on the other side. And that's how we just have to leave it. I don't have friends that love people trying to destroy me. I don't have those kind of friends. And I definitely don't keep them. Period. I want you to use the audio and the narrative of what happened here and other creative means from the trial. I want, like I said, download those things so when they shut it down off the internet, you got it. To alert the black community of the modern day William O'Neill's, Joseph Mobutu's, and Blaise Compare of the black world community. And now the, we got the Mr. Mobutu's or the race traders and the Auntie Crooked. That crooked auntie of yours, that's, that's what we're going to call him. For. I don't know why, but that, 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 it just rings to me. Auntie crooked, the crooked auntie. Yeah, that's one of them crooked aunties. She ain't nothing but a crook. There was still the future of our people. Crook meaning not crooked like, like, like they're not honest. Crooked like they're a race trader. That's a new term, auntie crooked. We got Mr. Mobutu. You know, you, we, we, we had Uncle Tom. Well, Uncle Tom, Mr. Mobutu, same dude. He just got he just got an African name. He just changed his name to an African name. His name Uncle Tom, but he just changed it to Sambo. His name really was Sambo. He just changed it from Sambo to Mr. Mobutu. And we never knew who the traitor was, the female. We didn't know. We didn't see her, but her name Auntie Crooked. Oh, Crooked Auntie. She crooked. She ain't straight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we straight black pride. She crooked. That's what the race treasonous females are like. Use the audio that I put out there for you. Teach people in your in your rooms with the young people. Show them this is our brother irritated Jenny. This is the work that he does. Look here. This is the one he was with. Listen to what she did to the court. And then have discussions. What do you think if things, even if things have been going wrong, should this kind of thing happen? What do you think about the auntie crooked? What kind of person is that? What about a Mr. Mobutu? Listen to this guy. Frank? It is Frank, right? Frank? Y'all remember that? Y'all remember uh, Devil in the Blue Dress? Remember that? Frank? It is Frank, right? Frank? Bang! <laughs> Y'all remember how Y'all remember... Y'all remember... Y'all remember... My man Mouse. <laughs> I like that movie. Devil in the Blue Dress. The devil ain't have on the blue dress this time. 
No, it was all black. So I want you to use it. Don't let this die because it's my life. And I'm like, you know what? You can use this as a teaching tool because at least this time, the person that loves you didn't die right away. We we had to wait to have to blaze Campari because he had the power. You couldn't do it right away. We ain't even know about William O'Neill when he murdered our brother Fred Hampton. Peace be upon our, our warriors. We really didn't know until we knew. Then we started wanting to cry because we couldn't believe he would be that close and do it. Well, we got real time now. We ain't got to wait. We don't have to wait till it's our brother, our deceased brother, irritated genie. Because I really got into the point, I'm gonna be 100% honest, but it's happened. My enemies have said, we're gonna destroy you. And in order to do that, we're gonna go out to the white establishment. We're gonna get the white establishment to come down on you. So the enemies that look like us have joined with the whites and the white establishment and the homophile establishment said, let's tear them down. And I, I'll be honest with you. I did not have the confidence in the past to say this, but I feel so proud. Okay, you got your team, you ain't got your white team. Yeah. Now I'm going to my people. So we can do this. And y'all are, oh, they're race traders, they're going to the court, and da, 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 da. Even the people in the court looking around like, who is she? Where's she come from? Because ain't nobody else white in the courtroom. So wait a minute, sis. He brought a what in the courtroom? Cave Becky. Blonde hair, blue eyed. Always trying to take the black man down. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. He, he, got a pit, he, told, he told us he was going to have some pit bulls on his team. He went and got a white pit bull. In a predominantly black county... He went and got a white attorney to go up against my black female judge, a um, um, female lawyer, and to try her case in front of a black, we had another black female judge. This is black female judge number two. Bail is black. The judge's administrator black, the sister. Everybody in the courtroom, all the people in the courtroom, look, even the other plaintiffs and defendants, like, who is she? Can she stand out? Like, where'd she come from? Montgomery County? I mean, what, what, you know what I'm saying? What she, nobody understand. Like, she came from this guy. Nobody get it. And my lawyer was like, I knew that was her because I know her. I, I, I've seen her before. I've had a case with her before, and I knew I recognized that name. And I'm like, I'm telling my lawyer beforehand, like, no, there's no way. He wouldn't get a white lawyer. He must be a coincidence. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was floored. I was floored. So we get up there in front of the judge. Um, the judge threw out the um, YouTube, my YouTube uh, argument because of the fact that unfortunately the threats that I was receiving were not coming directly from him but his followers. So I, 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 I couldn't argue that. But we did start talking about getting followed and the stalking, um, I'm sorry, which, was, which is considered stalking. And then also we went into the situation that happened in the bedroom. But when we started talking about the following thing, see, I thought, I just knew he was going to get up there and say, no, I didn't follow her. Mm. I never did that because it really would have been his word against mine at the end of the day. You know, I didn't have a, a court, I mean, I didn't have a, a, a police report from those officers that say they saw his car and they got his license plate. Um, I didn't have any photos or video of this situation. So I'm like, dang, I really don't have a, a leg to stand on with this if he says he didn't do it. He got up there and said, yeah, I was following her. Mm. I was following her because I wanted to serve her papers. Because he, uh, during our child support case, I told you he wasn't rep he wasn't represented by an attorney. He tried to file a counter child child custody and support case against me. So his argument was I was trying to serve her papers, and I didn't have her address at home, so I had to. <laughs> I was going to follow her to get her in. And I saw, oh no, here's the kicker. Um, it was actually, I had the papers in my car because mm -hmm. the judge is like, well, how did you know that she, did you follow your mom from the, from, how did you know we, that your mom was going to be there? Well, I knew she was going to meet my mom to drop off the children. And I happened to have the papers in the car 
And then, um, first he said, I happened to be at the Walgreens. That's when he was tripping himself up all the way around. I happened to be at the Walgreens. That was the first thing. Mm -hmm. Across the street. And I saw my mom's car. And I said, oh, is that my mom's car? And so I said, oh, mom, are you at the, 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 at the grocery store? And she said, yes. And I said, oh. So then I saw Neptari, and I said, oh, she got a new car. So I said, oh, I'm, this is my chance. I'm going to try to try to follow her to get her to deliver these court documents. And first of all, listening audience, there is no Walgreens across, the, across the, from the supermarket that I was at. Lie number one. There's no Walgreens within probably a half a mile radius. So unless you were down the road off of another exit and you got some sort of x-ray vision that you can see through everything, there's no way in hell you saw your mom's car because there's no Walgreens. Lie number one. So the judge said, oh, no, 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 I didn't mean that. What, what happened, I saw my mom's car and I called, I saw she was at the grocery store and I said, oh, I got these documents. So then I was gonna, you know, I said I could follow her to get the address. So now with my, my lawyer says, well, why didn't you just give the documents to your mom? <laughs> she knew she was going to the, oh, I don't involve my mother in these types of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why didn't you, we were in the middle of litigation for the child custody court, court case. I'm sitting, the, my, I'm her lawyer. Why didn't you send, no, she, uh, why didn't you send me the court documents? Oh, uh, I thought I had to hand deliver them to her. I didn't know I could give them to you. I, I'm not really well versed in law. Okay. Why didn't you hand them to her in the courtroom? We were in the middle of trial. Right there. We were in the middle of trial. See, and the judge is sitting here like, yeah, at the end of the day, the questions ahead stopped because he had no, he, he ran out of, he ran out of rope. He ran out of rope. And you have, you have no, you, you, it, it, you, you followed her. You were following her and we have no idea why you were following her. And you're admitting that you followed her. And, the, and your rationale for what you're saying today makes no sense. It makes no sense. Given the fact that you knew who her attorney was, you were in communication with her attorney. Her attorney sits three feet away from you. You had a court date coming up. You can walk in the courtroom and say, judge, by the way, I'd like to serve her right now with these documents. And the, the judge was right there. Sheriff officer right here. There's no reason for you to hand deliver anything to me. So that was a lie. I have no idea to this day what he was intending to do what he was intending to do. Then you fast forward, now we talk about everything that happened um, in 20, 2018 in the room. And Becky gets up there, well, why didn't you just run out of the room? If you had the opportunity to, uh, you know, when, he, when, he, when your son came to the door, and that's when I told Becky, I said, you know why? Because I never had a fist in my face. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know, I didn't have a plan. I was in shock. This is my husband. I didn't expect this from him. So I wasn't prepared to make an exit or do run the beat. I, I didn't know if I should be afraid of him or not be afraid of him. I don't know. I'm, there's a whole lot of things. This is all split second. My mind is racing a thousand miles a minute. She was nasty to me. This white, this white lawyer that he brought in there. Nasty to me. Nasty to my lord. I mean, if the judge had to intervene a couple times, they were going at it. And at the end of the day, the judge gave an opportunity for closing remarks. And oh no, I'm sorry. Let me go back. I, I missed the part. So during the during the case, we were talking about what happened in the bedroom and how we led up to the bedroom. And his whole thing was, oh, we had an argument earlier that day. My lawyer brought the documents to show that he smashed up my furniture. Oh yeah, I was upset. Well, what happened was, you know, I told her I was gonna smash it up. First, I just pushed it. And then she went running up the steps like she was so afraid. And then my son came down and said, Daddy, what happened to mommy's furniture? So now my son saw it. And so I just said, you know what? I said I was gonna do it, so I gotta do it. So I smashed up her furniture. That's exactly what the type of, uh, uh, just the type of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like. It was just nothing to him saying it. Like, it was like a joke, you know, in, in front of the judge. Like, I had to do it, so I did it. I smashed up, you know. Um, then we had, you know, so then what happened later on? So then she came back home, and she gave me this half apology. Well, first, she came downstairs, and, you know, she had this um, do-rag on, he called it. I had a do-rag on my head. And I came downstairs, and I was dressed all aggressively. Before my lawyer could even get the question out, the judge asked for her. 
What do you mean she was dressed aggressively? What, what, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Again, you talking to a black woman judge. I'm trying to understand. What do you mean she was dressed aggressively? Well, you know, she had this black do-rag on her head and you know, like, like the gang members wear, you know, and, and she had these sweatpants on and, you know, she came down all like, you know, aggressively, like, you know, and she came with this fake apology my lawyer said, um, I'm sorry, was it a do-rag? Wasn't it, in fact, a bonnet that most black women wear to protect their hair? No, 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 it wasn't like that. I know that it was, it was a, one of them do-rag things, like a scully, you know? <laughs> like, they wear, like, the gut. I'm like, wow. I mean, you can see on the judge's face, she, she write her notes, but I can see she's like, you got to be. I look like nothing of a woman just walking around with a do-rag and a scully on. I, I'm not even, I don't even look remote like somebody who wear something like that. It doesn't, it doesn't even make sense. I don't carry myself like that when I'm talking. I don't, it doesn't even make sense, right? But that's fine. So I, but, but, and also they're looking like she was aggressive towards you. She's five, seven. You're over six feet tall, 200 something pounds. And that's what she was aggressive towards. Okay. Uh, what else? So, you know, she came downstairs and, you know, basically the, the argument continued. So we continue arguing and we went upstairs and the argument continued some more. Uh, and then she left. That was pretty much it. And then she left and, you know, she came back and she said, you know, that she, so you never held her? No, I never held her against her will in the room. I never did any, so just complete lying and denial. The judge said, so was there a gun in the room? Um, I'm not sure, uh, I don't recall. Well, what do you normally do with your weapons when you had your, when you had, well, I, um, you know, since they're not in the house anymore, you know, I usually keep it, you know, I keep it around. I don't necessarily put it, she's not, I'm not asking you what you did with your weapons when now they're no longer in the house. I'm saying when they were in the house, this is the judge. This is how I knew she was tired of his lies. Cause she was, now she asked her own question. I'm asking when they were in the house, what did you do with your weapons? Oh, I kept them, um, I used to carry them on my person or I kept it in the safe. She said, so on this particular day, did you have the weapon on your person or was it in a safe? Um, I mean, you know, probably it might have been my person. So, so you carry a weapon around the house on you on your person all the time with your family. Well, I'm saying I don't remember. So, you know, she said it was there. It was there. Maybe it was there. I don't know. Uh, but I used to keep it in the safe, uh, locked up. Okay, okay. Um, no, you can continue with your question. She let my lawyer continue. She was done, and I could see it. I said he 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 hadn't. He, it didn't make any sense. He couldn't. He couldn't answer the basic questions, mm -hmm. and it sounded like complete lies. So now we go on to closing arguments and my lawyer goes up and gives her closing arguments, rest her case. Becky gets up, do her closing arguments. And she's, as she's talking, now this is something that I, in my experience, with, even with the previous judge, all judges do, I, I had to learn this. When they're listening to a case, they take dictation, very detailed dictation, so they can refer back to it in their, in their judgments or when they're reflecting on, on their questions they need to ask. So the judge is steadily taking dictation. But Becky says, I see the judge has already made her decision, but if you just indulge me and listen and at least hear out my argument, I'd greatly appreciate it. And da -da 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 the judge never ever looked up from the bench. I was like, wow, is this what did she just say to the judge? Judge let her finish. When the judge was done, she said, Okay, I'm about to give my verdict. Um, before I do, I like to say that. Um, both of you represented by um, great counsel. I've seen both of these lawyers um, before and they're, they're, they're excellent lawyers. Um, she said, but I'd just like to say one thing. Um, the defendant's ca uh, counsel made a comment about I was not paying attention, to, that, that kind of insinuated I wasn't paying attention. Um, but I was paying attention and I found that very unprofessional and that was very, it was uncalled for. Oh my God, judge, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, judge, I shouldn't have uh, she's like, that's fine. That's fine. We all make mistakes. You don't make that, let that happen again. But we all make mistakes. <laughs> um, she was like, but, uh, you know, oh no, no, judge, please, please do. You know, I, I, I apologize so much. Judge. I, this Becky and with her white privilege thought she was going to come and in, in into this black woman's courtroom and disrespect her as a judge unheard of. You don't do that as a lawyer. And you, 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 you can watch a basic law and order episode and no you don't disrespect the judge are you crazy no you're a white person who thinks i have privilege and i can come in and i can say whatever the heck i want because you're nobody but an n-word at the end of the day to mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. in a in a robe 
So, but who brought this Becky into the courtroom to sick her on my lawyer, to sick her on me, to sick her on the judge? Three, not one, not two, but three black women. Who brought the white Becky Pitbull in his words? Ayo Kimaki, your fearless leader. Ask him to show you his documentation of who his lawyer was. Mm. So he can say that I'm lying. Am I lying? Ask him to show you her name. You can go Google. I'm not going to give it here because I'm not supposed to give out that information. Ask him to show you who his lawyer was. In the court documentation. Not something he draws up. Not something he gives a, a, a card. I want him to show you the court legal documentation that says who his representative was in that courtroom. Then you Google her. You see her blonde hair, blue eyed self. This is what I want you to do. Because I'm not saying I'm supposed to be some perfect person and you've been supposed to just perfection. Judge me on what I show you personally. In other words, let's, and I'm just using the worst case examples I can so you can understand. Let's say I'm dating Becky. I mean, got a big roly poly guacamole Becky. I got a Becky and, and she got straight blonde hair. I mean, Becky's Becky. And she talks like this. I got Becky. What I'm saying is this. The only way I want you to believe that I got Becky, the only way, is if you at the hotel yourself and you walk into the room and you personally witness me with your own two eyes making out with Becky, not speculation, not we walked out of the room, I want you to bust into the door and look with your own two eyes and say, I seen him with Becky with my, oh my God. Now, here's the rules when that happens. This is how we can stop all the slander and we can move forward. When you see that, you personally stop supporting me because you've seen with your own two eyes the genie with the beast. Oh my God, he was with her. And I, he can't say it was a business meeting because that kind of business is not the kind of business we supposed to be into. I seen it with my own two eyes. All right, fair enough. But again, here's a piece of it. Part of the rules. You have to leave because you don't believe in this. However, you cannot share it with anybody. You leave because you've seen it, you witnessed it, you out. You're not supporting somebody who says they love black people and is against interracial dating. And then you witness the, I can't even describe the wicked acts that I was involved in that you're going to say you seen with Becky, but you cannot tell anybody why y'all think it all. Jenny don't want to be snitched on. No, because the truth and reality is that I'm not going to be with no Becky, which means what, which means when somebody comes to you and tells you that lie, you're going to have to be in a position to say, well, I know you're lying because the rules were you were supposed to leave and abandon the genie because you know he's not real and he's not honorable. However, you wasn't supposed to go around and spread it. And we're race traitors. You put that kind of name on somebody? Mabutus. We're Mabutus? Against our own race. Man. There are people out here who hear that and say, I'm going to take them out just because. You don't do that. That's crazy. And it's all spiral out of control because of his behavior. He did this, he destroyed his family, he ended his marriage. He, re he refused to take and accept accountability for his actions. 
He refused to allow his leadership and his organization to lay down some sort of penalty for his actions. He wouldn't allow the lanes to do that. That's why they had to back down. They weren't allowed to say, this is unacceptable. And here we are, where we're called, we're in a situation where we call race traders, and you bring a Becky in the room? Did you know that? I listened, I, I actually started to tune. I wanna hear when he's gonna have a show, because he did a lot of crying. Oh, that was what he did. But I wanted to cover back in the, <laughs> when you were said earlier that there was an incident in the child support case where the one of the people in the courtroom ran out the back laughing, one of the workers. What happened was, I, I remember that because I was, I was, I was sitting there, I saw it. He was on the, on the, um, he was, no, he was interrogating me. I was in, I was on the witness stand and he's interrogating me about, um, the children having a therapist. They were having a therapist for how long? Which you explained in, in early on. Yeah, which I explained early on why they had the therapist. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, how do you know they have a therapist? Oh, oh. And he started this fake crying thing. Like he was so choked up and literally I could I, I mean, I heard the door open in the back of the courtroom. I looked at the court out of the corner of my eye and I saw one of the court, this is a worker. I saw her go out the door, busting out laughing. She couldn't hold it. She had to get up and leave the courtroom. It was, it was so phony that even this person was like, are you in serious right now? It was unbelievable. It was so pathetic. I mean, <laughs> you, you really couldn't even laugh because- You couldn't even laugh because it was like, oh my God, is he serious? Yeah. It was, it was just so, it was, it was sudden and it was fake mm -hmm. and it was pathetic. It was pathetic. All at the same time. All at the same time. You, you almost felt sorry for him. Like, yeah. don't do that. You don't yeah. do that. Yeah. You're ruining your whole case by, by putting on the show. So here we are at the protective order and the judge says, um, and I thought I brought my protective order. So forget, I actually might have it. We'll sh I, I, I might be able to show excerpts from it because it's my protective order. Mm -hmm. But basically the judge says, um, I find the defendant guilty. I find that there is, ev there is a preponderance, her words, a nice big word, mm -hmm. a preponderance of evidence to suggest that the defendant did in fact stalk her and he did in fact threatened to F her up. And the judge didn't use the F word. She didn't say F, she said the word. That's why I was like, wow. He did, she did in fact decide to F her up on such and such a date. And I find that she is entitled to a protective order. And she will have to relinquish his weapons to the sheriff's department immediately. He will have to seek counseling immediately. These were all of his list of things that he had to do. He cannot, her, ad, her home address will be shielded under confidentiality. Her work address will be shielded under confidentiality. They will exchange children through this medium so that they don't have to interact. All communications will be done via, the, it was all laid out. It was all laid out. And at the end of the court, she dismissed us and it, I had to sit in the back to wait for my court order to be uh, printed up. And a sister in the courtroom, just a random sister, I don't know her. Because uh, I was in tears. It finally, the emotion, the overwhelming, the overwhelming amount of emotion that I had been holding in, I couldn't hold it back. I just cried. And I had a domestic abuse, uh, domestic abuse counselor that they appoint you who was there with me because I could, my, my family wasn't able to be there for me and they, they give me someone free assist. Another sister was there with me and I cried. My lawyer hugged me and, and she was in tears. And a random person came up to me who was just there with a, for a case for somebody else. And she said, I just want to give you a hug. An older woman, she said, you were so strong and you were so brave. And she said, and he was just lying. <laughs> it was clear to everybody in the courtroom, he was just lying. She said, you're gonna be okay. And I just cried and she said, you're gonna be okay. My lawyer came to me later and said, you know, when I was given the, the, the um, when I was um, uh, cross-examining him, I was sitting there at the desk, I mean, my table, and she said at one point, I heard somebody, he, he was he was giving an answer to something, and I heard somebody, just a regular person in the audience in the background say, he lying, 
<laughs> she was like, I couldn't even turn around. I was like, oh. And she I saw somebody else in court and said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. You wasn't fooling nobody. Only, see, these are people who are not in the African-centered community. They haven't drank the Kool-Aid. The ex online will still listen to that. Listen to that as if it was yesterday, not like it's today. No love for the other side now. You still listen to the stuff and say that was motivating. So it's unfortunate that it's gone a different direction, but at that moment, it was good when it, where it was. You can listen to that and let your children hear it because it's inspirational. That's it, though. Don't fall in love with nothing on this battlefield because it may change. And I ain't nobody's friend. I'm here for a race of people. And if you're fighting for the people and we're working together, we're going to all make mistakes, including me. We just, you know, pick up the broke glass, put it back together, tape it together, and start drinking some Kool-Aid. You know what I'm saying? But maybe not Kool-Aid. Maybe some fresh, clean, alkaline water. I know I got a lot of vegans listening. Eh. Anyway. You understand? They know nothing about him. They judging him right here and right now based on what he's saying, based on evidence that is being presented. That is it. And he has been found to be a liar. A stone cold liar by the judge, by the pe random people in the courtroom. A liar. The only reason y'all believe him because you, heard, you know who, him as the irritated genie and you don't want to see him. And I understand that. I understand that. I drank the same Kool-Aid. I never want to believe this person could be like this. I understand. But at the end of the day, that's our reality. And that's why I got the protective order. And lastly but surely, I want to add a couple things. So number one, Neff, Team Neff was all black all day. Team Aoki Maki was, eh, I don't know what the percentage is, but it wasn't all black. You had an Asian on the team, and you had a Becky on the team. Just, just want to, for a point of clarification. But one of the last things I want to say is when I left that courtroom, I didn't realize until it was time to go that I turned and looked at the name on the bench, and the judge was a Turner. Case closed. So whose side was Nat Turner's descendants on in that situation? Was that judge a race, a race traitor? Mm. That was an ancestor sending me a signal. I didn't even notice the whole time. Literally, I, the, my last look at the, at, the, at the bench before I walked out the door was a sign from the ancestors to let me know we got you, daughter. We got you. Not some phony community that doesn't know how to stand on my aunt. Not them. We got you. And here's a sign of all the names. All the names. That was the name of the judge. Case closed.
say thank you. <laughs> Thank you.